Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a glorious morning that we can come before God's presence once more, you know, to just chat a little bit about my brother's keeper. You know, many a times we ask ourselves, am I my brother's keeper? Think about it. Am I my brother's keeper? There are times in our lives when a brother or a sister may fall or may, you know, encounter some difficult situations or difficult times. But what is our first recourse? What is our first mode of action? We tend to push the person down instead of trying to help that person. So this morning, we're going to, you know, just go a little, delve a little bit in that situation and, you know, just look at it from a humane point of view, from a biblical point of view, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? You know, Galatians 6 verse 2 says that we ought to bear each other's burden. We are to bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. But guess what? When we see our brother and our sisters, you know, and they are bearing or carrying a burden, we tend to want to stack more burden on, the, uh, on top of those burdens. And we don't realize that, guess what? All it takes for us to do is to just show a little love. Show a little love to that brother or that sister. Because that person might be going through some things and we don't understand or we don't know what the person is going through. But we have to understand that there are many situations that can cause a person to encounter some hardships and some hard situations. And so it is our duty as children of God or as, as people to bear each other's burden. You know, the word of God in Matthew 25 verse 35 says, For I was hungered and he gave me meat. I was thirsty. And he gave me drink. I was a stranger and he took me in. How many of us can honestly say that when we see somebody going through a situation, going through a crisis, uh, that we can say, okay, we can offer a hand of, uh, uh, of love, uh, offer um, you know, some, some tenderness, some kindness, some enmity. How many of us can say that if a brother or sister is going through a situation, our first course of action is to stretch that hand of love to that sister or brother? No, because many of us believe that, guess what? You know what? They're going through. It is because of their own fault. Whatever happens, it is on them. Come on, let us look at situations. Many of us have been through dire, dire situations that we needed someone at that moment. And when that person stretched their hands to us, we become, you know, we, we, we find joy knowing that at least there is somebody out there who is able to show us love. But being in the situation where you are the one who is to stretch your hand to that person, you will not stretch your hand to the person. Instead, you'll trample over the person. Just this morning, I saw on Facebook a young lady crying out for help for her daughter, a 13-year-old living with a man. A 13-year-old, you know, dancing, nude. And, you know, the comments were harsh. When is it going, to, when are we going to learn that we ought to be our brother's keeper? The word of God says, a soft answer turn it away wrath. You know, but grievous words stir up anger. That lady, even though she was angry, she was aggressive in her comment, she was uh, cursing. We don't need to, to, to send back that type of, uh, of affection to her. What we need to do is send her love. Show her with love. Show her that, look here, it is not that way that you can do it. You can trust God. Allow God to take control. The Bible, the word says that God's hands are not too short for him to reach us. And so when we realize that that situation is happening and that young lady is going through that crisis, our main Action is to show her with love. 
try to pull her into the fold of God to know that, let her understand that God is able to do the impossible. There is nothing that God can't do. And when we trust him and when we put everything in him, he will come through for us. Obviously that, that, that lady is going through a lot because her daughter whom she loves is out there. She's afraid of her own daughter. But let me tell you something, there are things in life happening to our children at this moment. And when we ought to be praying for our young children, when we ought to be, you know, building them, growing, grooming them and helping them, where they are bashing other persons. I want us to remember that the word of God says that we ought to be our brother's keeper. None of us are perfect. We make mistakes. But what, look at it. What if the mistakes that you made were to come back at you? What if the mistakes that you made, someone were to use it and throw it in your face? What if the mistakes that you made, someone were to hold it against you? Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. And it's time for us to start realizing that, the, that a man will never help us. Government will never help us. People will never help us. It is only God who is able to help us. Stop trusting man wholeheartedly. Trust God. Put your faith and your trust in God and allow him to take control of your lives. Allow him to work out your situation. Allow him to be the centerfold of your life so that when situations arise and when things get harsh and when all of these situations come up, then he is able, you will able to know that you have a savior who is able to help you out of it. Stop trusting man. Man can't help you. Government will never help you. You know, we are in perilous times where we realize that every man is for themselves. But where are the weeping mothers? Where are the women who will stand up and fight for our children? Don't we realize that our children are under attack? Is it so hard to see that our children are being, you know, there's a war raging against our children? Can't we unite as one and fight for our children? It doesn't take a lot. All it takes is unity and love. Let us remember that if we're walking with God and we're trusting God, God is love. God is love, and as such, we ought to, to exercise love. I encourage us this morning, as we go forth, let us remember that it just takes a little bit of love to change the world. The Bible tells us that love covers a multitude of sin. And so it doesn't matter what you're going through today. Spread love. Spread God's love. And let us remember that we ought not to recompense to no man evil for evil, but provide things honest in the sight of all men. Let us remember that our master, our savior is love. And that when we show love, if we exercise love, the world will be a better place. It is not for us to judge each other. It is not for us to tear down each other. It is for us to show love and to exercise it, to live love, so that our world can change into a better place. God bless you and have a magnificent day. Just remember that God loves you with an unconditional love. He loves you and I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.